Okay, this is an exemplar for time series. Um, and we've got polar ice as the topic. Okay, so we're given data. Now you're supposed to do a whole lot of um, research about polar ice first. Okay, so we're carrying out a statistical investigation to determine patterns in the amount of sea ice in polar regions and use your analysis to make predictions. Write a report describing your investigation. Use the following steps to conduct your investigation and write your report. One, select at least one of the variables, area of ice in Arctic or Antarctic to investigate. Okay, so what do we do? We need to go to Insight. So we're gonna start Insight and we're gonna run it. We're loading. Thank you, Auckland Uni. Okay, and we're going to just push Run Insight. Now, I'll maximise that. And I'm going to go Data in, Import Data. I'm going to Browse. And in this data folder, inside the Insight folder, I've actually put inside time series folder, I've put polar ice data file, incorrect CSV, comma separated values format. I double clicked, I could have just gone OK. And I'm just going to go OK there. Now what were we asked to do? Choose the um, Arctic or the Antarctic. So I'm going to choose Arctic. I'm not quite sure if I've done that right there because this is time here, isn't it? So it looks a bit wonky, that going on. Um, but if I go advanced, I can click on time series, which would be better. Uh, so the time value is date, and I'm going to look at that one. And I can go time series plot animate. So when you look at this, whole animate thing should happen. Ah, it started. So you've got that data that looks like a dog's breakfast. And then when we're linking these data points up, we're actually visually seeing the pattern. So it's very cool. Now after some time, it will actually speed up. And this is a um, bit you don't have to do each time, but it's just to get you really seeing the data. Okay. So we can see, nicely sped up, we've got our time series plot for the Arctic. Okay, now this red line in there, that's a smoothing thing. It's some kind of a weighted average, so it takes a little window somewhere, it decides, takes a window, and it says, well, I'm going to um, kind of take an average and I'll uh, calculate that if it's further away from this if it's further away from the point, I'll give it less weighting. And it does a fancy calculation that we don't have to care about. All we care about is that we trust this red line, and visually we can say, yeah, fair enough, um, is actually the trend over time, ignoring the seasonal effects. So that's very cool. So I'm just going to minimise that. Okay. Our time series plot, we'll just give it instantly. Okay. We can push decompose. Wow. Decompose, we've got the residuals. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between the model and the raw data. So the model's a pretty good model. Now, if I push seasonal effect, that's amazing, phenomenal software. This is so cool. Because what we can see is all the Januaries to, on top of each other. It's a bit hard to see what year is which, to be honest. But we can see just how beautifully they track, how similar they are, year after year after year, so similar. So you can see that in September, we have a low, and in March, April, we've got a high. So that's your estimated seasonal effect. So the model's taking all the, these different years 
and then saying actually that that's what we estimate so I would say with this it's a good model okay and then we can push this button and it gives us a prediction so it's taking the model and magically calculating what will happen next within upper and lower bounds okay so your job is to talk about all of this okay good